Hello and welcome to the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. My name is Bob and in this episode I'm going to show you how I replace a set of shelves in this linen press or closet and I'd like you to follow along. Thank you. The old shelves are chipboard, sagging, unpainted and just downright ugly. Having marked the positions of the old shelves for reference, I then proceed to remove the existing supports. The wall sheeting is gyprock or plasterboard or drywall depending on where you are and removing the supports also takes some of the cardboard outer layer with it. As part of the job, I also removed the floor sheeting at the bottom of the cupboard. I then sand the walls and apply filler to the damaged areas of the plasterboard. Don't adjust your screen here to deal with the uh, fogginess at the side of the picture. I thought I would try turning the camera sideways to capture the narrowness of the linen press but uh, it hasn't translated well to viewing and I've used a side effect to overcome it. Once the filler is dry, it's back to sanding to make it all level and smooth. Next job is to cut to size and pre-drill the shelf supports. The new supports are being cut from 41 by 19 mm dressed pine. The replacement shelves will be in new positions and I have created a story stick on which I have marked a series of lines corresponding to the top of each shelf support. Always good to mark the top and bottom on the stick and as a further reference I have drawn an arrow down from each line to remind me that the support goes below the line. There are not a lot of frame members or studs behind these walls so I'm using a construction adhesive called liquid nails and screws to hold the supports on. I fit the supports to the back wall first using my story stick to fix the location and making sure each support is level before screwing it to the wall.
With the back wall supports in position, I then fit the supports to the side walls, referencing off the corresponding ends of the back wall supports and levelling up as required. I've reached the stage now where I'm ready to cut the new shelves. Now, there are many ways of scribing in a set of shelves. For bench tops, I'll often use a piece of cardboard and just keep progressively trimming it to shape. You can also overcut the shelves and use just a simple compass with a pencil in it and just run that down the side describe a line and yeah, use that and then progressively cut it away. The method I'm using today um, actually just involves four pieces of scrap wood. Uh, they're cut with an angle uh, so that they fit into the corners. The problem I've got in here is that it's not quite straight from top to bottom and that's not uncommon. Uh, there's a 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch difference both coming from front to or back to front or from one side to the other. In the past I would have held the pieces of wood together with uh, just tape but I saw a video by Andy McClellan, Gosford Handyman and he talked about uh, the same method but using a uh, hot glue and I'm going to give that a go today press it firmly into the corners The reason I have gone with the four board approach to template making here is that the shelves are in a tight space further constricted by the door jams at the front coupled with the space not being square either side to side or front to back. If the shelves were open at the front you could cut the shelf 50 millimeters wider and longer and then use a compass to scribe each side. Alternatively, if the shelf material is in short supply or expensive, as it is here, I would cut a piece of MDF wider and longer than the shelf dimension and again use the compass technique to scribe it to size. Off camera, I've used the template to cut out a dummy shelf or second template out of MDF which I will use to check my fit and clearances. The actual shelves will be made from 19mm thick plywood. Because I have to twist and drop the shelves into position, I need to make sure that I have enough wriggle room in the final cut to do this, particularly around the corner cover strips. Here I am back out in the tent wood shop, but it's a fine winter's day so I've not bothered with the tent. I position the template on the sheet of ply and mark the corners. My work on the template is focused on the middle position of the five shelves. The reason for this is the position represents the average shelf size and I will simply adjust overall dimensions for each of the other shelves based on this template.
I'm cutting out the basic shelf area with the power saw and completing the corner and cover strip indents with hand saws. Here I have cut out all five shelves and am now positioning them for a dry fit. I have also cut out five 12mm wide cover strips which will be glued and nailed to the front of each shelf on final assembly. Here I have the shelves and the cover strips laid out for painting so that I don't have any confusion when I'm putting them back I've numbered the position of each shelf at the back. One of the white dogs for which the garage is named has also been checking my work. The painting of the shelves, cover strips and the inside of the linen press has all been done off camera and here I'm in the process of screwing the shelves down to the supports. Off camera I've also templated and cut in a similar fashion to the shelves this melamine floor piece. It won't be screwed down but it will float and be held in position by the skirting boards. After caulking the gaps between the shelves and the wall, fitting the skirting boards and touching up the paint, here is the finished job. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and share it amongst your friends. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd welcome your subscription. And don't forget to ding the bell down below so that you're reminded every time a new video comes out. Thank you again.